Welcome to Abiding Presence Faith Community for Divine Worship for the 12th Sunday of the Christian year, 13th Sunday of the Christian year. We ask those liturgical roles silence their microphones. Our celebrant will be Bishop William Mark Havins, assisted by Deacon Christopher Larson. The intention of today's liturgy is for the people of the parish. Our entrance hymn today is number 800, Let Us Go to the Altar.
Son, and the life-giving Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Jesus invites each of us to follow him. And for the times we have not followed Christ in our thoughts, words, and actions, we ask for God's healing and forgiveness as we say together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault. In my thoughts, and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do. And I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God the Father of mercies has reconciled the world to himself through the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth.
children to walk in the light of Christ. Free us from darkness and keep us in the radiance of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten one, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us be attentive. reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall not anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Ava Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elijah left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah said, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh, and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom. It is an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by another. I say then, live by the Spirit, for you will certainly not gratify the desire of flesh. For the flesh has desires against spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you're guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I'm sure in many locations today, homilies are being given about vocations to the diaconate, to the priesthood, to religious life. But I'd like to suggest to you that that's not what these readings are about. These readings are a call to you and me 
to follow the Lord. It doesn't necessarily mean we all have to be clergy or religious. It means we all have to be Christians. We have to be little Christs. And the image that we're presented with when Elijah goes to Elisha, and Elisha is plowing the fields. He's got those 12 oxen yoked. 12 oxen. That's a lot of money back in those days, folks. They, they measured everything by cattle. So this is somebody from a wealthy family. And yet, after he tells Elijah he's going to follow him, he goes back, he slaughters that oxen, he burns the yoke, and provides the food to the family. It's a, an allusion to giving up worldly wealth and worldly impact on our lives in order to follow what God has planned for us. You heard it in that second reading, a similar reference to the yoke. But it was taking God's yoke upon us. Now, if you don't know, a yoke for a person is, you can see people carrying water. You know what they look like on oxen. But it just goes across the shoulders, and it shows that you're doing the task that you're assigned. It's supposed to make the task easier. And we're supposed to then, as we follow the Lord, focus ourselves on the task at hand. And Christ is telling us he doesn't want folks that are going to be looking back all the time. And one of the chief complaints, uh, complaints is the wrong word to use. One of the things that we do as humans all the time is we keep looking behind ourselves. Now, I'm sure you've heard comedians talk about Jewish guilt, Catholic guilt is a similar situation. It seems Jewish mothers and Catholic mothers are gifted at knowing how to guilt their kids. But what the scriptures are calling upon us to do today is not to be guilty. Because the moment that we embrace Christ, everything behind us is truly behind us. We don't have to wonder if we're forgiven because we are. Do we have to worry about what we've done in the past? No, because that's been wiped out. Our God does not remember that. We're the ones that recall it. We're the ones that keep saying, you know, back when I was in high school, I did such and such. Okay, so what? It's done. Well, I did such and such as a business person. You've been raised Christ. What you did in the past doesn't matter. It's what you do in the future. It's how you live your life as you go forward. This week, politically, our nation is in shock because a group of predominantly men looked back and said, oh, this doesn't apply. And women throughout our country are now prohibited from making decisions about their own health care. Not only that, but we even have one of our Supreme Court justices 
saying we've got to go back and look at whether premarital sex should be criminalized again, or if people could even have the right to buy contraceptives, and if same-sex marriages may need to be eliminated. Because these personal choices are not guaranteed by the Constitution. It's like they don't understand that the world has evolved. They want to look back and take us to a time when women endangered their lives. But that's not what we as Christians should be doing. We should be looking forward and we should be asking the question, what is it that Christ asks us to do? And Christ asks us to love. Not to judge others. And particularly in this country, as we approach next week's celebration of, our in, of the anniversary of our independence, we should be looking to guarantee to all people the right to liberty, life, and the pursuit of happiness. It's time for us to put our hands to the plow. Focus on the future. Focus on making our communities more Christ-centered, more loving. Not to worry about what was in the past, but only pursue the future and our path to the kingdom. Let us stand and profess our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed as God in your orders of worship. I believe in God, the eternal, almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the redeemer of all, the only begotten one, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, lived and loved among us, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into hell, and on the third day rose from the dead. Jesus, our Savior, ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of a loving God, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus calls us to follow him. In faith we raise our prayers and petitions. Our response will be, we choose to follow Christ. We choose to follow Christ. That the church may respond to Jesus' call with faithfulness and sincerity to build up the kingdom of God, let us pray. We choose to follow Christ. That the leaders of all churches today may not be, may not be people of fire and brimstone, deserving the rebuke of Jesus but rather in those who speak the truth of a loving and humble hearts, let us pray. We choose to follow Christ. That the local world readers might work to dismantle a system of structural racism and discrimination, let us pray. We choose to follow Christ. For the nations of the world, that they may not consume one another, biting and devouring in greed, and thirst for power, but serve and, and to help each other prosper in peace, committing themselves to forgiveness instead of revenge and conflict. Let us pray. We, we choose to follow Christ. For those whom Jesus is calling to follow him more closely, that they may not look back on what they are leaving behind, but gratefully consent to join his company and proclaim the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. We choose to follow Christ. 
for those in the season, that they were in the season of anguish, pain, and great offering, that God may be a lot of portions to the cup, filling them with strength and grace in the midst of the trial, especially Father Bob Zahini, Bishop Dory Noble, Michael Smith, John Mack, Edward Hart, Michael Augustinus, Stephen Strobel, Sarah Sexton, let us pray to the Lord. We choose, choose to follow, follow Christ. For our faithfully departed and part of it, those one cross to death, that Jesus may show them the path of life and the fullness of joy in his presence, especially. Let us pray. We, we choose to follow Christ. Christ. Loving God, hear our prayers today and answer them according to your will. Give us the strength and courage to respond to your call with conviction and sincerity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 855, O Lord, I Am Not Worthy. the power of your grace. May this new first help us to serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. And lift up your hearts. And lift up, up to the Lord. Lord. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let us give thanks. Mm -hmm. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son as our Redeemer. You sent him as one like ourselves, though free from sin, that you might love in us what you love in Christ. Your gift of grace lost when we disobeyed you. 
are now restored by the obedience of your Son. And so we join the angels and saints in the joyous hymn of your praise. and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Bring in the mystery of faith. share in the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Perfect us in love together with the patriarchs of the East and of the West, Christ our presiding bishop and Bill our bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the sure hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died in your mercy into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the Apostles, and with all the saints who have, done, who have found favor with you throughout the ages. In union with them, may we praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Creator, forever and ever.
eyes fixed on the Lord, we're there to sing as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in risen Christ who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, as, as I take communion, I recommend my life, my, my heart, heart, my thoughts, my everything, everything to you. you.
we offer this prayer for those that cannot be with us to receive communion today. Lord Jesus, I believe you are always present in the Eucharist. I love you with my whole heart. I want you to be always in my soul. Be with me, please, in spirit, though I cannot receive communion today. Keep me close to you always, as you promised. Amen. Amen. The table is prepared. Come, eat, and drink. Our communion hymn is number 536, The Path of Life. Our hymn of thanksgiving is Make Your Home in Me, as found in the handout. Burdens 
light and your yoke is easy. Your name is love and your grace is free. My heart was locked, but you had the key. Make your home in me. Make your you come to me in your homelessness burning in your eyes such a great distress who will heal your wounds who will make your bed I will comfort you I will share my bread for your burdens light and your yoke is easy, your name is love and your grace is free. My heart was locked but you had the key, make your home in me, make your is free my heart was locked but you had the key make your home in me make your home in me oh make your home in me sacrifice and communion and give us a share in your life and help us to bring your love to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for our 13th Sunday of the year. The Board of Directors has initiated a program in which we will collect new crock pots. The appliances will be distributed and in conjunction with the nutrition class. So far we have three crock pots donated. They were on sale at J.C. Penney's, and yes, that's a plug. They're still on sale. We have named this program after Father Brown, and uh, if you would like further information, please contact Dennis, who's heading that up for us. Beginning after this Mass until July 6th, the parish office is closed. If you need something in my absence, you need to contact the deacon. Um, he will be presiding at a Sunday celebration of the absence of a priest next week. On July 4th, we will gather at the home of Deborah Ann and Dennis uh, for an outdoor liturgy followed by a potluck and fireworks that are being donated by Jean Thompson. Be sure to bring a chair and a dish to share. The death of Father Brown has created a void in our ministry here at Abiding Presence to continue ministry effectively we need to attract others to ordained ministry. On the solemnity of Corpus Christi, we pray before the Blessed Sacrament, asking for an increase of vocations to the priesthood and deactivate, as well as the religious life. We ask you to include this need in your daily prayers. I don't know if it was in last week's or this week's, but there is a prayer for vocations there if you would like to look that up online and uh, include that in your prayer life. We thank you, as always, for all of your support those of you that are attending pre in presence, or those of you that are tuning in online. We ask you to uh, 
be generous in your support of our ministry as well. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Bow your hands before God's blessing. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Creating Father, the Redeeming Son, and the Sanctifying Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. In Christ. Thanks be, be to God. God. Our closing hymn is number 761, Anthem.